discuss with reference to the main important salient features of the double helix model of DNA. The double helical model of DNA was discovered by Watson and Craig. Okay. It is also designated as Watson and Crick model of DNA. With reference to the main important introductory aspects of the, the double helical model of DNA. The double helix model of DNA was proposed by G.D. Watson and F.H.C. Craig in the year 1953. This model was mainly based on the X-ray diffraction studies and crystallographic data made by two pioneer scientists namely Wilkinson and Roseland Franklin. For this outstanding contribution, all the four pioneer scientists namely Watson and Crick, Wilkins and Franklin were awarded with prestigious Nobel Prize in the year 1962. In the year 1962. With reference to the double helical model of DNA, according to Watson and Crick, double helical model of DNA is characterized by the presence of Helically twisted, helically twisted double chain of polynucleotide chain. Double chain of polynucleotide chain. Characterized by the presence of many nucleotides. Because of the presence of many nucleotides, it is said to be the macromolecule running in an anti-parallel manner to each other. One strand as phydash N. The phydash N is characterized by the presence of phosphate group which is systematically attaches to the fifth carbon atom of the pentose sugar derivative. Pentose sugar derivative. Because of the presence of phosphate group towards the phydash end of the pentose sugar derivative, it is designated as phydash N. Toward the other distal end, you can find the presence of 3 dash N. In the 3 dash end of the pentose sugar derivative, you can find the presence of hydroxyl group. You can find the presence of hydroxyl group. The one strand is 5 dash to 3 dash in manner. The other strand is 3 dash to 5 dash in manner. Because of this unique aspect feature, the DNA is illegally twisted and it is running in an anti parallel manner. Run again. Anti parallel manner. The two strands are coiled in a right handed manner in a spirally twisted staircase or ladder. The two strands are coiled in a right handed like a spirally twisted ladder or staircase. Because of the right handed least spiral manner, the DNA is dextro-rotatory in nature. The DNA is dextro-rotatory in nature. The next important point is the nitrogenous bases or attaches to the DXE ribose sugar. The nitrogenous bases attaches to the DXC ribose sugar with the help of N glycosidic bond under array at right angles to the backbone under attaches to right angles to the backbone 
comparable to a comparable to a steps comparable to a steps of a staircase if you observe the if you observe the two polynucleotides and you can find the presence of one purine and another pyramid and derivatives one purine and another pyramid and derivatives the next important point states that a phosphate group a phosphate group linked to phidash end linked to phidash end of the nucleoside through a ester bond with the help of a ester bond the phosphate group linked to the pentyl sugar derivative of the nucleoside with a ester bond as there is one such ester bond on either side it is called phosphodiester bond called phosphodiester bond as there is one such ester bond on either side on either side of a polynucleotide chain hence it is called phosphodiester bond the two polynucleotide strands are connected by weak the two polynucleotide chains are connected with the help of weak hydrogen bond if you observe the bonding pattern adenine and will always face with the thymine whereas the guanine will go always face with the cytosine with the help of three weak hydrogen bond adenine will always face with the thymine with the help of two weak hydrogen bonds if you observe the two polynucleotide strand the two polynucleotide strands are connected by weak hydrogen bond between the purine and pyrimidine bases of another strand purine and pyrimidine bases of another strand the next important point states that the dna as pairing of nitrogenous bases is always specific adenine always pairs with the thymine by two weak hydrogen bonds guanine always pairs with cytosine by three weak hydrogen bonds this type of specific base pairing is called complementary base pairing called complementary base pairing <coughs> called complementary base pairing the next important point states that that complementary base pairing will play very important role in exhibition of cherkov rule of base equivalence according to irving cherkov for the first time in the year 1948 for the first time in the year 1948 by analyzing the dna of several thousands of living organism he came to a conclusion stating the gerbes chergaf rule of base equivalence according to gerbes chergaf rule of base equivalence the amount of purine and the amount of pyrimidine derivatives in dna is always equal the amount of purine and the amount of pyrimidine bases in dna is always equal the next important point states that the ratio between the ratio between adenine and thymine guanine and cytosine are always constant and it is equal to 1 and it is equal to One adenine plus guanine, thymine plus cytosine is equal to one. Is equal to one. Is equal to one. 
this value it remains constant for all the species this value remains constant for all the species the sugar deoxyribose sugar the sugar deoxyribose sugar and the amount of phosphate group occurs in both the two polynucleotide strands in equimolar proportion in equimolar proportion this unit law is called chergaff rule of base equivalence chergaff rule of base equivalence put forward in the year 1948 with reference to the numerical aspects of the dna the diameter of the dna lx the diameter of the dna lx is about 20 Amstrongs or it is two nanometers. It is two nanometers. The diameter of DNA LX is about twenty Amstrongs. Each turn contains each turn contains ten base pairs. The length of the single turn it measures. 34 Armstrongs are 3.4 nanometers. 3.4 nanometers. In a single turn, you can find the presence of 10 base space. You can find the presence of 10 base space. Again, okay. the distance between the two nitrogen spaces. The distance between the two nitrogen spaces is always. 3.4 Armstrongs are 0.34 nanometers. 0.34 nanometers. The length of the DNA molecule is highly variable from chromosomes to chromosome and species to species. The length of the DNA molecule is very is highly variable from chromosomes to chromosomes and from species to species this is with reference to the main important salient features of double helical model of dna if you observe the double helical model of dna you can find the presence of some other aspects namely it is highly hydrophilic in nature it is dextro rotatory in nature in addition to this the dna is negatively charged the dna is negatively charged of the some of the important uh, properties naturally seen in case of dna it is hydrophilic in nature it is right handedly coiled in dna hence it is called dextro rotatory in nature and it is universally negatively charged This is with reference to the main important salient features of the double helical model of DNA, or the Watsonian Crick model of DNA. For this wonderful work, both Watson and Crick were awarded with prestigious Nobel Prize in the year 1962. This is with reference to the main important salient features of the double helical model of In the next class, we will going to discuss with reference to central dogma of molecular biology or central dogma of protein synthesis. Thank you.